श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, path maker to our liberation, our dear Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagaji, and all of you Hari Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. The word supreme is very unique. When someone hears of this word, The first thing that comes to mind is the most highest or ultimate. If we look in the world, the word supreme, the first thing that we think of is the supreme court. I'm sure most of us have never dealt with it because it's for politicians and for higher people. But the supreme court in the United States court system is the highest of courts meaning whatever they judge is the final decision let me give you an example suppose that you have done a major major crime in suppose you have a store and you do money laundering and you get caught by the FBI and due to that you have to go to the court well they don't know if you're innocent or if you're guilty so when you go to a regular court they judge that you have to go to a higher court so after that you're taken to the capital wherever the city capital is of that state for New Jersey it's Trenton you're taken to the court there. The judge tries to judge, tries to make a decision if you're guilty or if you are innocent, but he cannot. So what he says is that now you have to go to even a higher court. After that, you go to Washington, D.C., and there lies the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the final decision maker. Two other courts below it could not make a decision whether to judge you guilty or judge you innocent. But in the Supreme Court, which is not only one judge, but there is multiple members to it, they decide. And whatever their decision is, is final. No one can change it. That's how strong that court is. Because it's called the Supreme Court. In a similar fashion, in our religion, in our Swaminarayan sect, the word supreme is unique and extraordinary. Why? Because the one thing that makes the Swaminarayan sect, the Swaminarayan religion, different from any other religion, far beyond any other religion, is due to its God, which is Bhagwan Swaminarayan, who is supreme beyond all lords. This is the main thing to realize. After coming into the satsang, if one can understand this very point, this very factor, then everything else will flourish automatically. By understanding Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be the supreme lord of lords, one can attain Akshardham. Just like how in the Supreme Court, that judge that makes the decision is final and no one can overrule it. In the same exact way, when we perceive Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be supreme, then Bhagwan Swaminarayan judges and makes a decision that this devotee I want to take to my Akshardham and give him my form, my Swarup's bliss. And that's what happens. Kal meaning time, maya meaning illusion, or karma meaning action cannot make any kind of movement or it cannot touch that devotee because Bhagwan Swamiran has made a decision 
that this person is going to my akshardham because he understands me. Let me ask you a question. Now suppose you have two sons. You have two sons. Suppose that. You don't, but I'm just saying, hypothetically. Now one of your sons gets good grades, very good grades, is a top student. And your second son is the opposite. He does not get good grades at all. Now, when both of your sons were born, what did you want from them? That both of them become older, get good grades, right? And then go to a good college and graduate and get a good job or become a doctor, let's say. Both of them, you had your sight on both of them that they would do this or they would become this. But one of your sons, you at one time, when they were only eight or nine years old, you sat them down on the sofa and you told them that when you grow up, I want you to become doctors. I want you to study the best you can, get the highest grades in your class, and I want you to become doctors. You give, gave this teaching, you gave your, I guess, this to them both at the same time but as both of them grew older one of them got good grades got into a good college and became a doctor and the other one became nothing now my question to you is that you gave both of them the same message yet one of them became something and the other one didn't become anything would you like the one that became something or would you like the one that did not become something? Become something. Became a doctor. Why? Because it's in your ruchi. It's in your liking. You want them to do that. That person understood your ruchi. That person understood that my father wants me to become a doctor. So automatically your rajipo, automatically your asirvad, your blessings were bestowed on that child after he became a doctor because he understood you in the same exact fashion. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying that when you understand my swarup, my form to be supreme, to be almighty, to be kartaharta, all doer, then I will take you to my akshardham because my liking and your liking become one. You would only want to live with someone that has similar qualities to you, correct? Suppose you like to do dhyan bhajan and listen to kathavarta, and there's this other person who likes to do completely the opposite, go outside, watch movies, watch films, eat outside food. He comes and sits next to you in this chair and he tells you, that want to become friends, what would you say? Yes or no? No. Because you know that this person's liking is completely different from yours, is completely opposite from yours. In the same way, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying, when you become like me, when you understand completely my swarup to be Supreme Almighty, then me and you will live together in Akshardham and you can attain my swarup, my form's bliss, always and forever. This lecture today may be tough on some, but without understanding it, even Bhagwan Swamiran has said in the Vachnamur, Gatada Middle Chapter 13, that without understanding it, without telling this Sabha, this Vat, that Bhagwan Swamiran is supreme, there is no other way to do this but to tell meaning Bhagwan has even had to kind of push back and then hold his vato back and then slowly but surely at the end Bhagwan says in that Vachnamrut that this supreme lord that you see believe that supreme lord to be in that divine light and if you cannot believe that then he gives similar steps below but Bhagwan Swamiran is supreme Almighty Lord of Lords. That's what we have to understand. So, 
today I've brought with you a charitra that maybe some of you have heard, maybe some of you haven't. But this charitra is very, very famous in the Swaminarayan Sampradaya about Sital Das. See, Sital Das was a Brahman who was a spiritual aspirant who was desperate to find God, just like how we are desperate to find God. Having heard the glory of Ramanand Swami, Ramanand Swami was the guru of Sajan Swami, Sriji Maharaj, as we said. He arrived in Fareni. However, there he learned that Ramanand Swami went to Akshradham. So disappointed, he was preparing to return when Sriji Maharaj called him. Bhagwan Swami was there, he called him and said, come here. Instantly, by the grace of Maharaj, Sital Das entered Samadhi. Samadhi means trance. One cannot attain this feat right now because it's very difficult. But one point that proves that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Sarvopari and was Sarvopari even at that time was that the previous avatars that had come, like Ram, Krishna, all those could not put their devotees in Samadhi. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan, by just mere snap of fingers, put any devotee that he wanted in Samadhi and trance. This was why Bhagwan Swaminarayan was Sarvopari, in this format. He saw all the avatars in Ramanan Swami there, where? In Akshradham. When he, be, when he got received Samadhi, he saw them all in Akshradham, who? Ramanan Swami and all the avatars, avatars meaning Ram, Krishna, Dattatre, all those avatars that had incarnated before Bhagwan Swami Narayan, he had saw all those in Akshradham. What were they doing? They were serving Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Sriji Maharaj himself, there in that Sihasan. That Sriji Maharaj that was in Fareni, in that village, that Sriji Maharaj, Sitala saw in Akshradham. Akshradham is a divine abode, just like how we have heard of heaven in Christianity. In the same way, it's an abode, it's a divine abode of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. It is far and it's vast. If I can explain in an analogy that Bhagwan Swami Narayan has given in the Vachamrut Gadada, first chapter 12, Vachamrut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan has said that imagine. A world that is made out of glass and the mountains were glass and the trees were glass and the people there were also glass and suppose there is the Sun that was reflecting directly on this glass world how would it look luminous right it would look very very bright in the same way in Akshradham there is only Bhagwan and his Mukto in pure divine light there is nothing else there is there is no you can say there is no area for anything else nothing else lives there but Bhagwan and his mukto no one else not even avatars are can allow to stay there they might come there to do the darshan of Bhagwan but they cannot stay there because they're not eligible just like how a student that is in the 11th grade goes to the 12th grade and in the 11th grade he takes the ACTs and SATs examinations for college now when he reaches the 12th grade there's a certain point where you have to fill out your resume meaning you have to fill out what you got on your uh, SAT scores ACT scores also all the credentials meaning from standard 9 to standard 12 extracurricular activities you did also your GPA for all four years what you do is you submit all these credentials to a college and suppose this college that you're applying to has very very high rank in the United States and it has very very high standard it will not accept your 2.0 or 2.5 GPA with only a 1300 on your SATs. You need high scores to become eligible to enter in that college in the same exact manner. 
Bhagwan Swami Narayan. What he's doing is he's 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 kind of like the dean of a college. Everyone wants to enter into his college. He everyone wants to come inside of his college, wants to get an education in his college, but he only allows those who are eligible. How so? Well, who possess dharma, bhakti, gnana, vairagya. These are his credentials. This is his GPA. This is his marking point. Dharma, bhakti, gnana, vairagya, mahima of Bhagwan, his santo, his bhakto. Many, many kinds of qualities. And atmanishta, all these different, different types of qualities. And when he completely sees these qualities in his devotees, in that devotee, then Bhagwan takes him to his Akshradham. This is the eligibility. In the same way, going back to our story, Sita Das was taken to Akshradham by Sriji Maharaj in Fareni, a trance, a snap of the fingers. And Sita Das goes there. Sriji Maharaj is seated, seated on a nice throne, ornaments, Bhagwan is wearing these nice clothing. And there, Ramanan Swami and different various avatars and muktos are doing Bhagwan Swami and Seva. Sita Das cannot believe this, what he has seen in front of his eyes. Something that is completely astonished that how could this be possible? That same Bhagwan that I'm in looking down there in Farini, he's up here in this Akshar Dham and everyone is serving him. I came here to find Ramanan Swami and Ramanan Swami passed away but Sriji Maharaj himself was there up there in Akshradham. So here's what happens. During the Samadhi, Sita Das had a wish to perform the Pujan of Sriji Maharaj and the countless Akshar Muktos. So Sita Das had an idea there, or had like a sankal, a thought that I want to do the Pujan of Maharaj and all these muktos. Maharaj realized his thought thoughts because Bhagwan is Antaryami, omniscient, and said to create countless forms of yourself, meaning there's so many muktos, they're countless, and there's only one Sriji Maharaj in that light, in that divine light. Bhagwan said, if you want to do the pujan, of these countless muktos, you cannot do it one by one. You'll never finish. They're countless. So you'll have to take countless forms in order to do the pujan all at the same time, to finish the pujan. So Bhagwan said, to create countless forms of yourself, take the name of each avatar in turn and wish that if they are the supreme God, that you multiply into countless forms so that, so that you may offer pujan to all of them at the same time. Sita Das did as Sriji Maharaj suggested, but nothing happened. Bhagwan said that say the names of the avatars, Krishna, Ram, Dattatre, say them in order, and once you say them, then if they are supreme, any of them, any of them, all 24 of them, any of them are supreme, then all your forms, you will become countless and you will be able to do the pujan. Siddha Das did this, but nothing happened. Listen what happens. Then Maharaj said, Wish that if Raman Swami is Supreme God, then you multiply into countless forms. Again, nothing happened. Siddha Das was out to do what? Find Raman and Swami. He had found out that Raman and Swami had gone to Akshardham. So they're believing that I'm here to find Ramanan Swami. Ramanan Swami is here in Akshardham doing the seva of Sriji Maharaj. What did Maharaj say? To even to test that if Ramanan Swami is supreme or not. He said, wish that if Ramanan Swami is supreme, God, then multiply into countless forms. He wished this, but nothing happened. Finally, Maharaj said, wish that if Sriji Maharaj is the supreme lord then you multiply into countless forms he had he did advised and instantly he multiplied into innumerable forms and offered pujan to akshar muktos 
Finally, Maharaj said himself, if this murti here that is in Akshadam, believe this form to be supreme, and then do your sankalp, that this form is supreme, and then see what happens. He did as Maharaj said, and instantly his forms multiplied, and he did the pujan of Maharaj, proving, and all the Akshramuktas proving, that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the Supreme Lord of Lords. Maharaj convinced many in this way. And after what had happened was that out of the trance, Sitalas came down and fell at the feet of Sriji Maharaj who was sitting in Fareni and said that you are the Lord of Lords. And right there and then gave him initiation as his sadhu and named him Vyapkanan Swami. So this is the story behind Bhagwan Swaminarayan's supremacy. There is many, many stories. I am reminded of the story of Parvatbhai. Parvatbhai was plowing his field. And there at that time, it must have been afternoon, 12.30, and he decided that, oh, my mansi is still... Or no, at that time, he had decided that is, if, if Bhagwan, is Bhagwan Swaminarayan supreme or what? He wanted to see the forms of the other avatars like Ram, Krishna, Dattatre. What had happened was that in that divine light in the sky, he saw Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And there, those forms of these 24 avatars came out of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and came back into Bhagwan Swami Narayan, proving that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is supreme Sarvopari. This very story, Arpuja Guruji, when he was only five or six years old, just imagine a child only five or six years old. What would he know? How would he know even, what would he describe or what would he say about Bhagwan, even if he doesn't know anything about himself? In that time, Puja Guruji had told us this story, our santos in um, our katha, that in that time, when he had gone to school, every week, there used to be, how you know how we say story time, and each child had a, to go take a turn of taking a, or telling a story. One time when it was Puja Guruji's turn to tell the story of any story, he told the story of Paravatbhai and how the 24 avatars came out of Bhagwan and leaned back into Bhagwan. At that age, and then everyone found out that Puja Guruji was sent by Maharaj himself to spread his supremacy that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Sarvopari. In this manner, this whole religion, the Swaminarayan sect is divine. If one cannot understand anything, Puja Guruji even says in his Katha, if one cannot understand anything about Bhagwan or anything about Santos, at least understand and at least tie a knot that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is supreme Lord of Lords. There is no Lord beyond this Lord. There is no Lord even similar to this Lord. Everyone is below Him. Everyone is worshipping Him. Through Him, everyone is happy. Through Him, everyone's sakti or power is shown. But if Bhagwan decides that I want to take the power away from this avatar, avatar, or if I want to take the power away from this mukto, within a thought, all that power will be pulled back. That's how powerful Bhagwan Swamiran is, if one can understand. But understanding that He is Supreme Lord of Lords is the most fundamental principle in the Swamiran sect. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminarayan.
ಮಹಾದರ್ಶನಂ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿತ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನುಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ Almighty Supreme Lord our beloved Guru Sri Ram Maharaj path me ka to liberation puja pad guru ji and all of you devotees jai swami narayan when we listen incident from the life of devotees or any santos then those incidents give us so much inspiration to live our life in satsang very smoothly and in exact manner by which maharaj can be pleased upon us that's why we are listening incident from the life of devotees in bhakta chintamni 146 chapter niskuran swami describe us many incident happen in a life of nath bhakt of vadodara now today niskuran swami describe us the another incident happen in the another devotee's life વળી એક ભક્તની છે વાત સંભળાવું સહુને સાક્ષાત એક કણ બી કિશોર દાસ તેનો સૂત લખો નામ તાસ તેને સમાધિનું સુખ અતિ નિત્ય કરે નાથ પાસે ગતિ તેનો તાત કહે પૂછ હરીને જમે થાળ જો મહેર કરીને દર વોઝ ડ્યુટી હિઝ નેમ વોઝ કિશોર દાસ This Kisodas has one his own son and his name was Lakho. This Lakho he was a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan even from his childhood and in from his childhood he attained because of Bhagwan Swami Narayan's divine grace he attained the state of samadhi meaning whenever he desired to go to Maharaj then he sat for a meditation and direct reach at the place where maharaj meaning bhagwan swami narayan stay or sit there now once upon a day kishor das lakha's father he asked lakha as you every day used to go to maharaj in samadhi so now today if you go to samadhi and when you have a darshan of maharaj and when you talk uh, with maharaj or whenever at uh, and whatever time you make a contact with maharaj then please ask maharaj maharaj would you please come to my home for a dinner because kishor das was also a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and he had a staunch uh, he had a kind of desire in his mind that if maharaj himself divinely come to my home and if he accept my food then i will become very very fortunate that's why kishor das requested lakho that please on behalf of me ask maharaj if he would come to our home for dinner then lakho said it's okay i will ask to maharaj just as we are using a phone or the another media for communication like whatsapp viber or skype or any other way just as we communicate with the another person who are not staying even in a country even one who is very far from our country still we make a contact and we can talk with him in the same way this lakho even though maharaj was not there still even through samadhi he had also a kind of technology like we have a technology of phone mobiles internet he had a technology like uh, he had technology in the form of samadhi and in samadhi without any medium he directly reach in front of maharaj and he ask from uh, he ask anything to maharaj and even maharaj also give him any prasadi vastu or anything this is what his daily routine 
even when he had no any kind of such special task to ask maharaj or anything still he go in samadhi and in samadhi he enjoyed darshan of maharaj so lakho ask maharaj in samadhi maharaj my father his very strong desire to feed you so he he had give me a request for you that if you become pleased upon him and if you accept his food then maharaj said it's okay i know he had too much desire for feeding me something that's why i will come to your home go back and make some preparation then lakho came back from samadhi and uh, after coming back from samadhi lakho uh, describe what maharaj says in samadhi to his father kisordas and kisordas prepare very delicious food items and kisordas has uh, de- decided to feed ladu sweet balls to maharaj and that's why he made sweet balls now when at the time of dinner kisordas offer thar first to maharaj and in the murti from murti maharaj himself divinely present over there and maharaj himself eat a half sweet ball at the same time and whoever present over there they all have a darshan of maharaj that maharaj divinely came there and he himself accept this half a ladu and the another remaining part from uh, in the in the plate uh, maharaj didn't uh, take all those things maharaj only accept a uh, half a ladu and all those other prasad maharaj gave back this is what the incident uh, this incident give us inspiration to live our life in such a way that just as kisor das even though he was a father and still lakho his son he lakho was very uh, advanced in spirituality so even though kisor das was a father still he requested lakho in the same way even though we are elder in this satsang uh, meaning not spiritually but even though we are uh, elder in age we are elder or senior in a uh, in passing years in satsang or even though we are uh, coming first in satsang than the others still if we feel that the another devotee who is not uh, who is the sen- uh, who is junior or who is uh, younger than us but if he is more advanced than us in spirituality he is more near to maharaj than us then we should make him risk request or we should pray to him or we should remain humble even though that person was younger or junior than us this is the message from this incident now the next incident in that incident lakho's father kisordas he was a devotee but lakha's mother she was not a devotee she didn't believe in bhagwan swami narayan that bhagwan swami narayan is a god now this is the problem but all the people of village and his other family members they all believe that uh, lakho had a status of samadhi and he every day go to maharaj in samadhi they all believe that the samadhi is true but lakho's mother she didn't believe that the samadhi and bhagwan and bhagwan swami narayan and everything is true she didn't believe now once she asked to lakho if your bhagwan swami narayan is true he is the supreme almighty and he is the god then he will give me darshan in the form of lord sri krishna because lakho's mother she didn't believe in bhagwan swami narayan but she believe in lord sri krishna that's why she requested for a darshan in the form of lord sri krishna 
from Maharaj. So Lakho said, it's, oh, it's okay, this is not the big deal, this is very easy thing for Maharaj. And that's why Lakho entered into Samadhi and in Samadhi he reached up to Maharaj and while staying, when, when standing in front of Maharaj, he requested Maharaj, Maharaj, this time the another question I have, the another problem you have to solve it and this problem is not too big for you, this is a simple one. And in this way, Lakho described Maharaj that my mother, she didn't believe in you, she didn't believe in our satsang, she didn't even believe in the samadhi and everything. Now she desired to have a darshan in the form of Lord Sri Krishna from you. And if you give him such kind of darshan, then she might be become your devotees. Then Maharaj said, it's okay, I will give her darshan in the form of Lord Sri Krishna while keeping a feather of peacock on head and uh, holding a bamboo was stick meaning a vasadi a wooden flute in in his hands and wearing pitambar a dhoti this is what Lord Sri Krishna's form and Maharaj gave her darshan in the same form as she desired in her mind so this incident and after this incident after having darshan in the form of Lord Sri Krishna by Maharaj, uh, Lakho's mother also become a devotee of Bhagavan Swami Narayan. She also cultivate a uh, niche or a faith in the form of Bhagavan Swami Narayan that there is no any other person or there, there is no any other God besides this Maharaj. But this incident gives us the idea what to desire from Maharaj. Not anything else but his darshan. And even just as this Lakho's mother, she didn't have a faith in Bhagwan Swami Narayan, nor she, be, uh, nor she, she were ready to uh, accept that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the Almighty Lord and He's divine, nothing. Still, as she had a belief in Lord Sri Krishna, so she desired to have a darshan from Bhagwan Swami Narayan in the form of Lord Sri Krishna. No doubt, she had no faith, no trust, no uh, niche or anything in Bhagavan Swami Narayan's form. But we have the faith, we have a trust, we have uh, firmly cultivate our everything, meaning our faith and everything in the form of Bhagavan Swami Narayan. That Bhagavan Swami Narayan is the Almighty Supreme Lord and there is no any other God or there is no any other Lord besides this Maharaj. That's why now for us, we have to desire in our mind that now, today, I am going to Mandir. So what color of Vaga Maharaj wearing, what will be in his right hand? Whether Maharaj has a Pag or a Mugat in his head, in this way. There were many many questions and there were many things for us to uh, repeatedly and many times we will engage our mind in such kind of things. Not only that but whenever we have a, a time of Mansi Puja before that or after that we also engage our mind in, in the same kind of thought that now today uh, this is a very hot days of summer so I will uh, offer some ice cream to Maharaj I will, uh, I will as this is a winter I will give him some hot uh, soup or anything to Maharaj in this way oh this is a very hot day of summer so let me go with Maharaj in a garden oh this is a snow time so let Maharaj go outside to play in the snow. This is what the many other things, many many these kind of thoughts. If we repeatedly uh, enjoy in our mind, then our mind become engrossed in the form of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and this is also a kind of devotion. So this incident gives us 
to engage our mind in the form of Bhagwan Swaminarayan by thinking for uh, thinking from uh, thinking for only and only of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Now, the another incident and very interesting incident in the life of Lokho, and this is the uh, the unique incident that once upon a day Lakho was sitting outside from his house at the time as she had a sama uh, she had a status of samadhi so he can see everything or whatever the we can say divine so once when he was sitting outside from his house and at the time some yamduts the attendants of dead god they were enter their street then Lakho uh, he was thinking in his mind how is it possible I am staying here and how dare these Jamduts enter my street then he stopped all those Yamduts and he asked why are you coming here this is my street then Jamduts they, those Jamduts they uh, politely say to this Lakho that this is not for you you should stay in your house we are doing our business we are coming here for taking one's life from your neighbor because he was not a satsangi he, he, he is kusangi meaning he is not a very good person that's why because of his senior life we uh, we are standing here from Yamraja to take uh, that person into Yam, uh, Yampuri, meaning in Narak, in a hell. Then Lakho said, no, this is my street and you could not enter. You could not take that person. Then Yamdut said, you should do your job, you should stay in your house, otherwise we will beat you. Then Lakho say, I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. How you dare to say me that you will beat me? And in this way, Lakho, by remembering Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine form, he himself increased his own form. Now, remember, in one form, Lakho was sitting in uh, sitting outside of his house, and in the another form, he. Uh, conversing or he facing these Yamduts and in this another form he increases his form and he increases his body and he made his body just as those Yamduts have because Yamduts has n uh, not a body like that of us they have very uh, different kind like a uh, diamond like bodies and this Lakho also increases his body now he started to beat those Yamduts. Yamduts actually their duty is to beat uh, to everyone who are sinner. And this Lakho, he is beating these Yamduts. This is the power by worshipping Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Even one uh, even an ordinary person cannot see the Yamduts or even one who has even a, uh, a by any by mistake if one has a darshan of these Yamduts then that person cannot see, uh, sleep in a night one cannot even uh, stood in front of those Yamduts meaning he become very fearful but this Lakho, he was very brave because of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine power. And he started to beat those Yamduts and that's why Yamduts uh, run away. But Lakho also run uh, after those Yamduts and Yamduts, they went back to Yampuri. And Lakho also went after those Yamduts in Yampuri and in Yampuri there were many thousands of uh, Yamduts there still Lakho have uh, bought he has trained of Bhagwan Swami and that's why he had no kind of fear he beating one by one 
he fighting with the, uh, all those yamdus and yamdus become very very fearful and they all run out run away and even they emptied the yampuris all those yamdus they run to aksardham there in aksardham they requested maharaj maharaj you have given us the right to beat those sinners you have given us the right to give the uh, punishment to those who perform sin on this earth and that's why we are doing our job but you are devoted your devotee is this uh, lako he even beat us so please give us something help then maharaj said it's okay but uh, as first you try to uh, tease lako and that's why if you accept his request or if you remain humble before him then he will not beat you but you become stronger you wanted to show your uh, bravery and strength to loco and that's why he had show you his uh, his bravery and his strength so now go back to yampuri and um, pass the pass my message to lakho that uh, and after this message lakho uh, never disturb you any one of you then in this way all those yamdus went back to yampuri and lakho also come back from samadhi and he also come back from yampuri in this way lakho didn't let that kusangi into yampuri this is the power of bhagwan swami narayan's duty now the last incident uh, niskudan swami described for this lakho that the one another devotee in the same town and his name was pitambar das this pitambar das had he was very poor so he had nothing to offer bhagwan and once he had a guava fruit one piece of guava he desired to give this to maharaj but how is it possible so he hand over this fruit to lakho and he requested please on behalf of me give this fruit to maharaj now in lakho in his house he sat for meditation uh, while taking fruit in his hand and he go he entered into samadhi after some time when he reached and when he go there in front of maharaj and he requested maharaj maharaj this is a piece of fruit uh, this is a one fruit for you from pitambar das he had too much desire to give this fruit to you so please accept his devotion and bhagwan accepted that fruit so at that time this fruit disappeared from lakho's hand in his house there maharaj accept take that fruit in his hand bite one in guava and give this prasadi written to lakho and at the same time when the other persons they see on the hands of lakho the one bite is missing in a guava fruit this is what uh, uh our, this, this is what the miracle because this is the uh, our worldly things the fruit of guava is worldly this is not divine and still it even though lakho is not doubt in samadhi enter in samadhi and go to maharaj in aksardham but this fruit also can go in aksardham with this devotee so whatever things attached to bhagwan swaminarayan's devotee who had a constant contact of bhagwan swaminarayan so that uh, that things or that person also can have enjoy of bhagwan swaminarayan's presence so this teaches the principle that whenever we attaches ourselves to uh, ourselves with the ekantik satpurush like puja guruji who had a constant contact with maharaj and if we attach ourselves to him then we have also a contact of bhagwan swaminarayan 
even though we are not feeling today but one one day in the future we have uh, we have such kind of divine feelings that our self is also attached with the god so in this way niskulan some describe the incident happened this divine incident happened in the life of lakho uh, son of kisordas uh, by describing this incident niskulan some also teaches many things like we should also uh, keep desire to feed maharaj the another thing is that we should also enjoy uh, many kind of thoughts related to bhagwan swami narayan that uh, just as lakho's mother she had a desire for darshan in the form of lord sri krishna from maharaj in the same way we have also uh, desire for darshan from maharaj that maharaj will give me a darshan in white clothes or bhagwan uh, or ganesh maharaj will give me darshan in pink clothes in this way now this is the second message the third message is for uh, is for us that we should never uh, we should have uh, we should cultivate such bravery just as uh, lakho had even he fought with the uh, yamduts we do not want to fought with one uh, with this yamduts but we should at least have ability to stay and uh, even stop those yamduts but how is it possible if we do not make anything false in our life then this is only happen if we uh, we do not follow each and every uh each and every commands of bhagwan swami narayan then how is it possible for us so for that we should follow each and every command of bhagwan swami narayan and our puja guru ji now the last incident and in that incident uh niskuran swami described this last incident from uh, pitambar das uh, that he gave fruit to uh, lakho for maharaj in the same way we should also if we wanted to offer anything to bhagwan we should also offer it first to our uh, to ekantik sant who had contact of bhagwan if we have not direct contact with bhagwan then we should also use such kind of mediators like our pujya guru ji so that our things or our devotion can be reached up to maharaj this is the message from this uh, from all of these incidents and many other incident remain in the same chapter 146 chapter of bhakta chintamani we will continue it later shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jay shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dar matmajam vasudevam madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swaminarayanam nilakantham bhaje ganeshyam maharaj ni